My name is Chris Dubuque. I'm one of the field technical managers. I'm located way out west in uh, Hillsborough, Oregon, which if you're not familiar with that part of the world, it's a suburb of Portland. I'm going to be talking a little bit about some weldment fundamentals inside of SolidWorks today. So like I said, we're going to talk a little bit about some fundamentals of, of weldments. I don't think that um, you'll really leave overly enlightened. I'm not going to show you something that you probably have never seen before inside of SOLIDWORKS, except maybe the structure system functionality inside of 2019. Um, but I'm going to go through a little bit of some background information on weldments, the importance of creating our sketches, go through some examples of actually building a weldment, generating the cut list, creating drawings, and of course, how to customize all of this information. Uh, the example that I'm going to use is not overly complex. It's a little bench, as you can see there up on the screen. Uh, you know, I need, I need a bench for my garage is kind of the, uh, the case study that I'm using here. So uh, with absolutely no welding skills whatsoever, of course, I'm going to fabricate it out of steel. That clearly makes the most sense, doesn't it? Um, so a little bit of background on weldments. You know, and the traditional definition of, of weldments out there, it's just it's a unit formed by welding individual pieces together from an assembly, and they become this massive single structure. A uh, few examples, you know, very, very common. Here we've got some, some tubular structures, some, some pallet storage units, stairways, you know, all examples that if we think of weldments in our head, these are probably what comes to mind, various uh, tubular type cross-section structures uh, welded together. You know, they start as individual parts, you know, a jigged up assembly, and then they turn into this one essentially monolithic structure. So some other examples of weldments, though, that when I think of it don't necessarily come to mind, but, you know, a massive frame for a piece of construction equipment. Again, very large, thick steel plates welded together becomes this one uh, cohesive structure. And an even larger example of a weldment that I found here. Um, so again, individual parts welded together, temporary assembly time, and then they essentially join back into what could be considered a single part. Now in SolidWorks, they are treated as a single multi-bodied part. Might be a little bit unique to some, um, but that's how they are, are handled. That's how we create them. Now, a little bit of trivia here, a little bit of quiz, a little bit of a quiz. I'm going to say they have been around forever. And I'm going to ask everybody, if you want, send in on chat, when do you think the weldment functionality was introduced inside of SolidWorks? Uh, I'll give a couple of minutes to see if anybody uh, wants to participate in my on-the-fly um, poll here, see if there's any curiosity out there. Somebody nailed it. I've got a lot of dates that are right around when they were introduced. Um, but, uh, but someone got it. 2004. I had forgotten personally how long SolidWorks have, or excuse me, how long weldments have been inside of the software. They've been around forever. Introduced in 2004. It's one of those things that um, you might not even remember SOLIDWORKS before it had weldments. I know my memory of, of SOLIDWORKS is uh, a little bit hazy back then. So it's a single multi-bodied part. It's described with a cut list. This, uh, this allows us to uh, itemize everything in a bill of materials type table. And there's a specific weldment feature set. Now, the cool thing about these specific weldment tools is if you have a weldment feature in your model, it will automatically keep the merge body functionality off. So even if you're not creating a quote-unquote traditional weldment, if you just want an easy way to always work in a multi-body part environment, as silly as this sounds, just add the weldment feature to it and then merge is off. Uh, automatically, and you can do really whatever it is that you want to do. 
So why do we use these? Well, one, this is the type of geometry that we need to create. These are our designs inside of SolidWorks. And these dedicated tools make it easy to create. Um, you know, I can speak from my experience before 2004. I needed to create something that would be considered a weldment. And I built it as a very large in-context assembly. You know, I had forget the uh, exact number of parts, but you know, dozens upon dozens upon dozens of individual parts. They all had in-context features, so they fit. I had all these files I needed to keep track of. Took a while to rebuild because of all those in-context references. So with Weldments, you know, this one file to manage, it makes it so much easier. It's easy to share. I don't have to send somebody an assembly. I send them a part, maybe a drawing as well. Uh, the cut list, again, it's all automatic. It's all handled by the software. And I say it's flexible because it's not only for, you know, kind of traditional welded structures. I see a lot of uh, maybe kind of out towards the fringe ways of using weldments. A really common not for welded structures example is framing. I see a lot of uh, wood framing done with weldments inside of SolidWorks. One that kind of caught me by surprise not too long ago is somebody was using weldments for like interior trim, like crown molding, things like that, to get all the miters in the corners set up. So it's one of those functionalities where, yes, it has its absolute dedicated kind of purpose-built functionality. You may be able to utilize it in, in areas that you really didn't think it would apply. So how do weldments work? And that's really what I'm going to spend most of this time talking about here is um, sketches. Like everything in SOLIDWORKS, sketches are extremely important. Weldments are no different. We use sketches to create the layouts. Um, you know, what is this quote-unquote frame going to look like? Typically, but not always, you know, at least for me, I sketch the, uh, the sketch for the frame as maybe the center lines of everything. Um, sketches are also used for the profile. So whatever your cross-sectional shape of your structural member and weldment terminology in SOLIDWORKS or your tubes or your beams, however you want to phrase it, everything that you want to represent needs to be in that single sketch. So in the screenshot you can see there with some simple square tubing, we've got a sketch profile for the outer, a sketch profile for the inner, we've got all the fillets that are modeled in the sketch as well, and also we've got these extra little points, these extra little sketch points, and we'll see how those can be utilized in weldments in just a couple of minutes. Now, behind the scenes, SOLIDWORKS basically creates a sweep, puts your profile on your path, sweeps it from point A to point B. Now, in the background, again, SOLIDWORKS is doing all the heavy lifting for us. It's grouping the same size of, you know, members. It's automatically in trimming where, where it can, where we want it to. It's keeping track of this cut list. So it's, again, dedicated functionality. It's highly automated and, uh, you know, allows us to build some, some pretty neat things. So I mentioned this once before, but as in everything in SOLIDWORKS, the importance of sketching. You know, these sketches are really what we spend, in my experience, most of my time doing when I'm creating any type of, of weldment model. Your layout sketches, as I'll refer to them, they can be two-dimensional. Everybody knows how to build those. Uh, but maybe more commonly, they're 3D sketches. And if you're like me, might need to brush up on your 3D sketching um, uh, tools. It's not something that we tend to use every single day inside of SOLIDWORKS. So I've got a couple things to, to keep in mind. Number one, you know, use the tab key on the keyboard. That flips the axis that you're actively sketching in. On the screenshot, you can see the little sketch pencil with a ZX. Um, you can also see uh, the highlighting around the sketch origin, so hitting tab changes a, a temporary 2D sketching plane, X, Y, to Y, Z, to Z, X, to help you control everything that you need to control inside of your 3D sketch. Also, really watch those relations. They catch me out all the time. Um, because we're dealing with a 3D sketch, we don't have the luxury of horizontal and vertical always. So we have to think about adding relations along X, along Y, along Z, Maybe we leverage parallels and perpendiculars quite a bit more. Um, but it's just one of those things. Because we're not constrained in a plane, 
it's up to us as the user to really make sure that our sketches are fully defined and we capture the appropriate design intent. So with everything, you know, use planes, especially with 3D sketches, either full-on reference planes like we're familiar with, or I call them temporary, although they're not, but the internal 3D sketch planes, leverage construction geometry. Honestly, in every sketch you build, use construction geometry. I'm a big, big fan uh, of utilizing that to help out the sketch. And, you know, with weldments, there's definitely some shortcuts you can do. A really common is is to extrude a solid boss or extrude a surface and then utilize convert entities to capture all of the edges. That's a uh, kind of a quick way to build a, a basic frame type geometry. And I'll show you this here just so you can see some of the nuances of that, even though it's not super helpful in this example. So again, I need a new bench for my garage, not super complex four feet wide, two feet deep, you know, 30 some odd inches tall. I want to have a shelf that I can adjust and put in a, an angle brace in there. Um, so I'm going to look at this or go through this a couple of ways, you know. How do we build this if we only are comfortable with 2D sketches? Just because 3D sketches are more common for weldments doesn't mean that's the only way that you can build. Um, what about using a 3D sketch? You know, kind of go through a basic tutorial of how 3D sketching works in SOLIDWORKS. And then that converting of solid edge operation. So I always like to talk about what's the best method. Honestly, the best method is whatever captures the design intent. I find these days that design intent tends to get lost, or at least it's not spoken about as much as it used to be. You know, how do I want this bench to behave when I change it. That's, you know, sometimes a very, very important thing to always think about. Typically in weldment sketches, it's going to have a combination of 2D sketches and 3D sketches. Maybe you do utilize a little bit of the, the converting of, of solid entities. But whatever tool you're the most comfortable with that allows you to appropriately capture your design intent, you know, I think that's the way to go. So let's jump into SOLIDWORKS here and take a look at this. So I'm going to build everything in SOLIDWORKS 2018, and then towards the end I'm going to bring up 2019 and talk about some of the differences inside of Weldments in 2019. So I'm going to start again in just basic 2D sketches. Uh, but before I sketch anything, I'm actually going to create a reference plane that is the, uh, the top of my bench. Now the way that I like to build planes is I always select planes, hold down the control key, drag and drop to make a copy. Maybe you know about that one, maybe you don't. So I'll be using that quite a bit in this example, just control, drag, and drop to build planes. So I now have a plane floating up, you know, basically 30 inches off the floor. Nothing fancy here. We're just going to insert a sketch. Uh, you'll also see me leverage the shortcut toolbar. So if you're not familiar with that, which I really hope everyone is and utilizes it, uh, I'm just hitting the S key on the keyboard to bring up my, my customizations. So some real quick sketching here to knock this out. Again, I'm not trying to create the most complex piece of geometry on the planet. Just go through a couple of examples of, of how we could utilize whatever sketching tools we're the most familiar with. So there's the, uh, you know, the top of, of my bench. Let's create a few more planes and just uh, maybe make things a little bit easier to see. I'm going to turn on the top plane again, represents the floor of my garage. And I'm going to grab the, the front plane, just control drag to make a copy of that plane, and then click on a vertex of the sketch, and that will attach that plane to the sketch. So parallel to the front plane through that vertex on my, uh, on my initial sketch, just makes it a little bit easier for me to capture the design intent I want to capture. And the legs are nothing fancy here, just a couple of vertical lines. And I'll admit, I didn't do a very good job of sketching those legs to really infer uh, any relations to that horizontal top plane. So I think I'll just utilize a, a construction line here. So I'll just draw on a construction line, snap it, snap it right down to the, uh, to the origin there if I, can, if I can pick it up. Oh, this is actually interesting. Uh, notice what I was trying to do here. This is kind of a side, side note. You can't actually pick up the origin. Uh, that red origin is a projection of the model origin. So as strange as it is, I actually 
you know, because I'm in this isometric orientation, I need to select the model origin. Uh, sometimes that'll, that'll sneak up on you. So we'll just make that midpoint horizontal, and that'll square, square everything up there. So there's my front legs of my bench. I'll now make a final plane. Again, just a control drag copy of the front. So control, left click, drag, left click on the sketch vertex there. And I'll simply select my two front legs, S key over, and leverage convert entities. So reusing as, as much as I can here over and over and over. And then finally, if I want to have a, uh, a sketch for my, my shelf height, I'll control drag the top plane. You know, I'll just key in however high I think that should be, put a sketch on there, and I think I'll just grab my very first rectangular sketch, again, leverage, convert entities. And uh, you know, there's the basic frame for my little steel bench. But you can see if we look at the tree, you know, a lot of planes, a lot of sketches, a lot of planes, a lot of sketches. This may or may not be the most efficient way to build this, this particular sketch, but if this is the mes method that I'm comfortable with, it will absolutely get the job done. You do not have to only use 3D sketches. So now that we have an example of 2D, let's go ahead and, and make a new part and take a look at creating all of this inside of a 3D sketch. So 3D sketches, you get from the drop down here, choose a 3D sketch, and I will select from my shortcut toolbar um, a command. But notice some of the sketches or some of the sketch tools aren't available. So there's some things you can and cannot do in a 3D sketch. Uh, your basic lines and, and arcs and things like that are available, but sketch slots are not. So you just have to be aware you don't have every single sketching tool in a 3D sketch. Now, you do have sketch rectangles. Makes this particular part much, much easier than it used to be um, before we could do that. So I'll start off maybe with a, a center rectangle. And this is where watching the cursor feedback and hitting the tab key is very, very helpful because right now I am sketching in the XY plane. And if I hit tab, it'll switch over to the YZ. And if I hit tab again, it'll switch over to the X. Z plane. And it does behave the same way. I can just kind of click and drag out a rectangle, put my dimensions in there. Um, but I want to point out that it behaves pretty nicely. So SOLIDWORKS does a, a pretty good job of, even though it's a, a 3D sketch, making it behave you know, mostly two-dimensional. It kind of locks that rectangle down into that particular plane. Maybe I'll put a couple of dimensions on here. Again, we'll say 48 or 24 by 48, and there's, there's the shape. So it is behaving very much like a, a 2D sketch. Some other things that I could do, you know, maybe I'll grab another rectangle, but this would be a corner rectangle, and we'll just snap right from one of the vertices, and I do need to hit tab to change my, my sketching plane. So you can use that tab key after you've started to sketch a rectangle like I've done here. So maybe I'll create a rectangle there. You know, maybe I'll create a rectangle here. Now the second and third rectangles, SOLIDWORKS doesn't uh, you know, restrict or restrain as much as it did the first. So this is one of those situations where you really have to watch those relations. They appear to be, dare I say, vertical, but obviously they're not. And things can really move in a lot of ways you may not expect them. You know, if you're clicking and dragging, watch the little dashed lines. It kind of gives you an idea about the depth and the height and, and where you're moving it around. So I'll just add in a couple of relations here to merge those points. Again, sometimes the relation you think you need to use isn't actually available. So that's kind of the trickiness of um, 3D sketches. You have to get it close and then, then drag and drop there. Now to square this sketch up, Maybe I'll take this line, and I can't make it vertical, but I can place it in the Y direction as long as the absolute global Y works. If that didn't work, well, maybe adding in a perpendicular would be more appropriate. So it's not that 3D sketches are impossible. You just need to think maybe a little bit differently on how you want to connect everything up to capture your design intent. I'll select these two legs, and we'll just make them equal. 
And the top of this will be pretty easy just to create a rectangle again. I forgot to hit the tab key, so let me tab twice. It's going to create the top part of my bench. Key in a dimension for the height. And I do need one additional rectangle, you know, for my, for my shelf in there. So another example, it, it looks good, but you can see, you know, it's not, it's not as square as I thought it was going to be or I thought it would be. So again, I'll add in, in this case, I'll do it differently. I'll just say along X. We'll take this along the Z direction. And again, just put a dimension in there to help control that. Now, if anybody out there uh, is really familiar with 3D sketching, uh, you might be thinking, wow, there's actually an easier way to build something like that. And there is, and that's to utilize the uh, 3D sketch planes. So I'm going to go ahead and just show you a little bit different workflow when you're dealing with 3D sketches. Now, even though this is a valid sketch, we're going to window select and say goodbye. And what we can do when we're 3D sketching is double click on existing planes, and you'll see this kind of uh, dashed grid, this temporary plane get activated. That is SolidWorks essentially locking us into a 2D plane. So we have a 2D plane or a 2D sketch within the 3D sketch. The important thing to remember if you're going to utilize this behavior, and this always catches me out, is you do need to double click to get into the plane, double click to get out of the plane. So it's kind of a, an in and out operation. Now while you're in a 3D sketch, you can dynamically control drag to create one of these planes. So I'll double click to activate the top plane. Let's see if I can get it to show up here. Now I keep moving it. Well if that doesn't work, there is an integrated uh, plane option. So it looks a lot like your your regular reference plane command. You can create parallel planes complete with your constraints in there. And it's just another way of, of working inside of the sketch. So again, double clicking in, double clicking out. But notice what happened there. That plane kind of disappeared. They are, dare I say, temporary. They do have their own visibility setting under the view pull down menu. So you can double click to jump into this plane. You can use normal two. I could easily create a new rectangle, infer those um, vertex points to help me define it, double-click to jump out of it. Oh, you can see I accidentally made a few more planes. So SolidWorks was doing exactly what I asked of it. I just didn't have view visibility or plane visibility turned on. So some uh, good old user error getting me out there. Now the dimensions are completely off of this sketch. I do need to control it a little bit more effectively for the for the width and the, and the depth of it. But you can see that it kind of gives us, I'll say, the best of both worlds. You've got 3D sketch and a 2D sketch going on. You know, it makes it pretty easy to come in and just essentially connect the dots to create the legs uh, of my bench. So again, when you're working in a 3D sketch, you can double click on reference planes to build a temporary plane, double click to jump out. So just another way of, of working with it. Now to quickly wrap things up, the last way to build a, a weldment, and it's pretty appropriate here, and this is definitely the fastest, but it's just simply to leverage 3D modeling tools. So I'll really quick, the same way that I created the 2D sketch example, create my sketch, and then I'll immediately create an extruded boss. So basically, you just specify either a solid or surface volume of, of where you want that frame to go. You can then insert a new 3D sketch in the model and leverage the convert entities command to select every single edge to turn it into a 3D sketch. Um, now there's a, a couple things to be aware of. There is an order that you'll want to do this. First, you want to select the edges before you click on the 3D, or excuse me, the convert entities command. So I've inserted a 3D sketch. We window select, but notice nothing happens. It's not actually picking anything up. I do need to leverage filters. So if you're not familiar with filters, F5 brings up your selection filter toolbar, and there is a filter on there to select edges, which also has a hotkey of the letter E. So when you turn on an edge filter, which is necessary for this little uh, 
a shortcut, it will select all of the visible edges. For a cube, you know, I'm missing a handful of edges. For a complex part, I could be missing dozens or even more uh, of the edges that I need to select. So again, the next step after you, you know, you turn on a filter, just go into wireframe. And now you can window select and grab everything. So this is a, a tip that's all over the place. See this used quite a bit. Make a solid, turn on your edge filter, select everything with a window, and then convert entities. So just a couple clicks of the mouse gets me the same frame. So for this sketch, definitely the way to do it. But I like to use 3D sketches. Now the model, or the model, excuse me, the feature is still in the tree. So you may not need it anymore. Uh, if you don't, you could always right click, just delete that body out of the bodies folder. That way you're left only with your sketch wireframe of whatever it is that you're, you're working with, and then you could go ahead and, and continue everything there. So many different ways to build these particular uh, sketches. Again, this is where I spend most of my time working with weldments. The actual creation of the weldment features, very, very quick. This tends to, tends to be the most involved. So the weldment tools, you know, their own dedicated set of commands to help you build this type of a model, starting with the weldment feature. Um, that's essentially what keeps track of the cut list. That's also what keeps that merge body option off. But then the dedicated tools that we'll be using, the structural members to create our, our tubular or our steel cross-sectional shapes, so maybe it's aluminum, maybe it's lumber. Uh, the important thing is, is they, they typically have this constant cross-section. Automated ways to trim and or extend, a lot of flexibility with that command. Cap ends with uh, end caps, put in little plate gussets, represent welding conditions with weld beads. So dedicated tools to help us generate these models. But that doesn't mean we cannot use other commands. You know, our extruded bosses, that's what we use to create plate type weldments. You know, the table, table surface of my bench will be just a simple extruded boss. Of course, hole wizards, extruded cuts for any type of holes, chamfers, fillets, patterns, mirrors. In the end, a weldment is just a multi-bodied part. So that means we can use all the features and use those body patterns and body mirrors to help replicate those features to really speed uh, the creation of that part up. So again, a, a unique subset or unique set of commands to automate this multi-bodied part. So when we generate that weldment, we'll be creating structural members. Now within the structural member command, there's a lot of automation. The software will automatically group everything together. We can add new groups. This helps us set up for the auto trimming within the command. As we'll see in this example, the order does matter. Um, we'll look at ways that we can get around that as well. We have full control over how our corners are being maybe mitered or butt overlapped. We can control where our profile is relative to our, our path itself. And we'll drop in a couple of gussets, and of course we'll utilize trim extend and kind of wrap everything up with, with the mirror. So this, I like to think of, this is the easy, easy part of weldments. Let me go get, get my model here, which you can see it is the same sketch. I've just added that one diag diagonal member in there. All, all the dimensional information is the same. So up on the weldment toolbar, we'll start off with a structural member. And we can see just a handful of options. The ones that you get when you install SolidWorks are ANSI inch. And you can see there's some basic C-channel, pipe, rectangular, tube, S, and what I'll be using here, just square tubes. But there's also an ISO folder with very similar um, options. So it is by no means a complete set of all possible, you know, cross-sectional or structural steel or structural aluminum, aluminum shapes, excuse me. But I'll show you how to customize those in just a few moments. Now I have added in some other folders that we'll look at here, my profiles and then my custom folder. And I'll talk about um, how we'll leverage those and when we get to the customization portion. So I'll start off with ANSI inch. I'm just gonna be using for this example some simple square tubes. 
And I have three sizes by default to choose from. So I think I'll go with two by two by quarter inch and simply select, you know, wherever it is that I want to start. Now this first selection does kind of lock me into um, a group of members. So for here, if I select this part of the, the uh, sketch, I can go down if I would like to, but I could not then go across. So they basically are locked into a, a planar, for the most part, kind of a, a planar entity of these structural members. Now, if you accidentally select something you don't want to use, you can always deselect it. And now I'm going to change and basically just step my way horizontally around this particular part. So those are going to be the, the main members on the top of my, my workbench. Now, if we zoom in and look at the corner, for example, we can see that uh, SolidWorks is automatically controlling the lengths of them. That's part of that trimming and, and automation. And that's all controlled over here on the left with the corner treatments. I've got a, a butt overlap option enabled. I'll switch it over to miter the corners. And you can see graphically how it changes right there. So you do have full control over the corner treatments of every single corner in a weldment group. I've got four corners, therefore I've got four options. So I'm going to change it to one of the overlap conditions. Uh, we'll just say, you know, end but one. So basically it's going to overlap them in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction, relatively speaking. And uh, what I do want to change, though, is I want two tubes in the long direction to be as long as possible and the tubes in the short direction to be as short as possible. So I need to change this corner right here and I can do that by clicking on the little pink sphere there. You can see it says click to specify the corner treatment and in the corner treatment window I can change it from whatever butt overlap it happens to be, I'll just switch it to the other. So there we can change that particular corner and if I wanted I could make that one corner miter. I could also specify appropriate weld gaps on the corners. In this case, I'm, I'm just going to leave it as is. I'll do the same in the corner here in the uh, upper kind of left-handish corner. We'll just switch it to end but two. We'll say OK. And now I have quote unquote long tubes in the 48 inch length and short tubes in the other length. So that's one of the things about weldments that I see uh, gets commonly forgotten, just the ability of changing the corner treatments on a case-by-case -case basis where you need to. Now the software does a pretty good job where we may not have to do that frequently, and I know I kind of forget about it, but it's always there uh, to clean things up. The other question that I, or that I get asked quite frequently or that tends to come up is, well, what if I haven't created the sketch at the appropriate dimensions? So, for example, if I rotate my table around, or, or better yet, use the, uh, the right view, you can see my profile, the center of my profile, basically the origin of that profile sketch is right on my path. And I didn't really think about the size of tube that I wanted to use when I drew the sketch. I just roughed in 48 by 24 by 30. So what I can leverage at this point over in the property manager, clear down at the absolute bottom is the locate profile option. And that is where all these extra points come into play. That will allow us to basically transpose uh, maybe this point, for example, and have this point slide down to where the center of the profile is right now. So this allows you to place that profile wherever you need to. It will zoom in very, very close. I will select this point right here, and it'll snap down. And as I rotate, now my tubes are automatically resized, and basically everything is within the bounds of my, my 24 by 48 inch kind of rectangular profile. So that allows me full control. We'll specify a new group. Now groups are beneficial because the structural members created within the group will all be auto-trimmed. Now this only works if the size and the type of the tube is consistent. So if I want a second set of two by two by quarter inch tubes, a new group is the way to go. If I need completely different tubes, maybe I want pipes or C-channels or whatever, I would need to accept the structural member feature and then add a new one in there. But we'll go ahead and specify just a new group. 
and we'll see here the auto trimming, I'll say really kind of take over. So we'll go ahead and we'll just create, you know, this set of members right there. Now each group can have its own corner treatments. So just for the sake of difference, we're going to set this group to be mitered. And again, so everything fits correctly, I need to use that locate profile. Sorry about that, a little bit hard to see, but I'm going to specify this point right there, and it will shift the entire sketch inside. So that will make sure that everything, you know, fits correctly. One more group will allow me to create the vertical members. So we'll go ahead and we'll create one vertical member there. And you can see here a, mem uh, a, a little note popped up that SOLIDWORKS really couldn't trim it. And you can see what's going on is my tube barely intersects those horizontal tubes, but the horizontal tubes are getting trimmed back to the first tube. Um, a lot of these automated trim conditions uh, you do have control over. So for the sake of argument here, let's move this tube in as well. So we'll leverage locate profile, and I'll use this little point right here. And again, SOLIDWORKS is going to go through and do a bunch of automated trimming. So now my corners that were mitered are no longer mitered. Now that does make the most sense in this condition, but what if that's not what we wanted? What if, for whatever reason, we wanted to keep these two tubes mitered and we wanted a separate vertical tube here and a vertical tube there? Uh, there are ways to do that. And what we can do is, again, leverage the corner treatment, and we can see we have two different trimming groups. The horizontal lines, they have a little bit thicker green there, and then the vertical line. And what we need to do is change that trim order. So we'll say trim order one for the, the horizontal tubes. We'll use the little arrow there to change it to two. We'll take the group two trim, trim order two, and we'll use the down arrow to change it. Um, sorry, I changed them the wrong way there. There we go. Sometimes I get the order of operations uh, backwards. But you can see what we've done here is these are now maintaining the miter, and it's broken this vertical tube into two separate members. Now, I'm not saying that makes any sense here, but I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to close out of here so you can see what the software is calculating. Again, the trimming is very automated, but in the end, we have full control over how these trim conditions come, come together. Now, by shifting everything in, I wasn't able to get the automatic trim happen up above. That's OK. We can take care of that in just a moment. But I'm going to go back in and edit, uh, edit the weldment here, and I'm going to fix this corner. That's not really what I want. So we'll just take that one to two, take this one to one, and we'll say OK. Now, the way that I've constructed this I really can't add more members into this group. And the reason for that is they will share that same offset position, so from the center uh, out to that vertex right there. So I really need multiple groups to individually place those vertical tubes in there. So that is something else that can definitely happen when you're creating you know, weldments like this one where I have to offset the profile every time. Not too bad, we'll just say new group, drop in a tube, we'll locate the profile, and then we'll bring that far corner, I know it's a little bit hard to see, in as well, add a new group. So the, the groups are very, very powerful in helping us really position everything exactly where we need it. I'll shift that one in, and then one final group, and then we'll get out of this kind of graphical mess that we see on the screen and we'll place that right there. Last but not least, green checkbox OK. And there we can see, you know, my frame's coming together fairly nicely. I'm going to go ahead and save it real quick, utilizing that save notification here in the lower right-hand corner. We'll just do a real quick save, and we'll drop it up onto the desktop. And I'm going to utilize the save as copy and open. That's going to keep my original layout sketch as is, but it'll save it as a new name and then open that file up. So it allows me to work with both of them in the future if I need to.
Now, I do need to clean up all of these intersecting tubes. I didn't do a very good job of laying them out. That's okay. That's where the trim extend command comes into play. So we'll be using this quite a bit moving forward to clean up my, my mess of my, my frame. We'll start off by selecting the four members that we want to trim. So these are the bodies to be trimmed, and we can see we've got four different options, the end trim, we can miter, we can, again, butt overlap one and butt overlap two. And I'm just going to trim them relative to a single face. Since everything is planar on the bottom of these vertical tubes, makes it pretty easy to trim those four tubes. You can see the callouts let us control which bodies are going to be kept, which bodies are going to be removed. If the software you know, makes the incorrect decision, it can definitely happen. Simply click on the discard to switch it to keep or keep to switch it to discard. So those graphical callouts in the air in the graphics window, excuse me, those 3D callouts allow us to change those. So now my corners are looking much, much, much nicer. The final structural member I need to add is my angular brace right there. So again, we'll go back into the structural member command. I'm not too creative. I'm just going to keep with a two by two by quarter inch tube, and we'll go ahead and we'll drop it in there. And now notice what happens with this tube. I have all sorts of problems as I rotate it around. Uh, it really has no vertical horizontal orientation. It looks like it's rotated about 45 degrees or so. Um, so I need to square it up. And that's where if we slide down here towards the bottom, potentially the mirror profile, the alignment, and the rotation options of your structural member come into play. So the rotation angle is relative to where it is now. I can just specify any angle, hit enter, and you'll see that graphical preview change on the screen. If you know what you need to, to rotate, this is a good way to just key it in. But often we don't know what that value should be. So that's where we can select an alignment vector. So I'll choose an alignment vector, and I'm just going to choose this edge on my, my vertical leg, and we can see there I can either align horizontal or vertical axis. Now this particular part, you know, its, it's axes and in, in directions one and two are identical, but if it was a C-channel or an I-beam, I may need to flip these accordingly to get the orientation correct. Now that it's rotated, I can then use that locate profile. We'll snap it out to this vertex, or this vertex will now shift all of it in. And we can see that my, my angular member actually looks pretty good right now. Again, we'll say OK to that. And because this was a separate group, I don't have the advantage of all the nice automatic grouping and trimming, so I do need to add in a separate trim command. So again, we select the tube. And now I'll select two faces to trim relative to, trim one, and trim two. And we can see here I have a lot of possible solutions, so I do need to tell SOLIDWORKS to discard that and to discard that. And by selecting these planar faces, they will be just planar cuts. Uh, if we needed them coped, well, that's where we could leverage uh, a body option. We'll select that body right there. And we can see two different options on it, whether it's a simple cut or whether it's a full, full coped piece of geometry around there. So there are, again, quite a bit of flexibility when working with uh, the different trimming options inside here. Now by showing that example, I reset everything. So let me set it back to, to discard the two end bodies. We'll keep that central body. We'll say OK, and that looks pretty good right there. So for my simple frame, you know, the structural members are all done. Let's kind of uh, finish this out by adding in a couple of plate geometries. And I'll start off by adding in a couple of gussets. Now, even though they're not really necessary, you know, nothing in this is uh, all that appropriate. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, but I'm going to add in a couple of gussets. And we'll just select a pair of supporting faces. So there we can see the gusset getting created. There we go, might be able to see that a little bit better. We've got options to increase the size about, we say, three inches by three inches, not, not three by 30. Keep missing that darn decimal point. And there's the preview of the gusset. This is just a simple triangular gusset. There is a polygonal gusset where we can enable that and then control the size of, of the flats on the ends. 
There's also an option to enable an, an interior corner chamfer right in this area. So maybe I want a half inch chamfer. The thickness, full control over that. If we rotate things around, I can increase that thickness, you know, make it a half inch plate, make it a quarter inch plate, make it an eighth inch plate. You can offset the thickness, near side, far side. You can offset the location relative to that face or that pair of faces, excuse me. So again, it all comes down to starting to sound a bit like a broken record, but flexibility within the commands. Now, I do want a second gusset of the exact same parameters, so I'll leverage the push pin to keep visible, and we'll say OK, and I'll just rotate around, and we'll drop in a gusset here as well. So we'll put in a couple of corner gussets. Um, you can see, see how those are added. Now, I could continue to add gussets all over the place, but now what I'm going to do is leverage patterns. So a real quick SOLIDWORKS feature mirror. So just a regular mirror allows us to copy what we've already created, of course. Let's grab one mirror across the front plane and make sure you expand the bodies to mirror. And we'll grab that angled tube, those two plate gussets right there. We'll say OK. And one more mirror kind of finishes everything out. So I'll grab the shortcut toolbar select the mirror for the second time, and let's mirror everything, the bodies across the right plane. So even though we do have these dedicated tools, doesn't mean we have to use them every time. Definitely faster to mirror those angled braces, mirror the gussets, than recreate everything. The last component, excuse me, the last, I'm thinking of an assembly here, the last body that I want to create is just the tabletop. So we'll put in a sketch, flip the view orientation around normal two, and really quickly grab a corner rectangle, and we'll just drop in that top piece of geometry. So wrapping things up here, kind of sharing some functionality using regular extruded bosses. I could go ahead and add a number of cuts and things like that if I need to, um, but we can combine the you know dedicated weldment tools to just regular multi-body part modeling um, with, you know, extruded bosses and things of that nature. So very, very easy utilizing the weldment tools to go from, you know, our wireframe sketch to, you know, a bit more of a complete table there. Now, as we're working with this behind the scenes, SolidWorks is keeping track of the cut list. And this is basically a, a weldment's version of a bill of materials. It very heavily utilizes the properties in the profiles, specifically the description properties, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. Very easy to customize, easy to reorder. Um, but what you may notice about the cut list are the non-structural members. So the plates, the gussets, things of that nature, as we can see in the screenshot, they don't always show up immediately. Now, thankfully, in 2018 and you know 19 moving forward, there's a really easy way to get that information in there. So the whole time, as we model, over here that used to be the bodies folder is now the cut list. Now the cut list, I always have mine set up to create automatically and to update automatically, but that's not the only way of doing things. You can toggle those off and completely manually define everything. In my opinion, kind of defeats the purpose of the automation, but I do understand there's times when you, you need some really fine-tuned control and kind of force the cut list the way that you need it to be. Uh, created. Any one of these can be selected, right click, we can go to the properties, and we can see all the information that SOLIDWORKS is creating for us. So we've got the, the various items of our cut list. If we move things on screen, we can see how they automatically highlight how everything is grouped together. So there's the, the four vertical members, or excuse me, four horizontal members. We know the length, we've got different cut angles, we know the quantity, the total you know, additive length in there. So we can see all the other information. Now this additive length is all the square tube. So the two by two square tube, I need roughly, you know, 435 total inches of it. So that's what SOLIDWORKS is, is calculating there. Now we get to item eight and item nine, that's my tabletop and my gussets, it doesn't have all that nice information in there. It understands the material and it understands the quantity, but really nothing else. 
Now you can manually go in and add anything you want to a cut list. For example, if I want to keep track of the weight, I could add in a weight property and I could link it to the SOLIDWORKS mass. As long as my units and my mass properties and materials are set correct, that particular plate is going to weigh probably pounds, about 81 pounds here. Big, big old slab. Might have to rethink that. Um, but what about other information? You know, I want that volumetric data. Now, thankfully, SOLIDWORKS will calculate this automatically. This is a little bit newer functionality. So the way that it works is it leverages the bounding box. So you can right-click on any of these items that don't have the appropriate information in your cut list and say create a bounding box. But before I click that button, I want to show you how to set this up in the document properties. So we'll go to the options, we'll go to the doc properties, and we'll choose weldments. So here we can see the bounding, bro bounding box properties. Excuse me. And the default description there, which we can turn off, is plate, comma, the thickness, length, or width, whatever property you want, by, again, whatever property, and then finally by whatever property. So this is, you know, this is new in, in 2018. If you want to think of 2018 as still being new, um, but we can go ahead and, and set that up that way. So I'm going to leverage this, and now when I right-click and I say create a bounding box, SOLIDWORKS creates the bounding box, but more importantly for me, for the gussets there, is it will automatically put in all that description information. So there's my plate. It extracts the thickness, the 3 by 3 by quarter inch little volume, and creates that description for me automatically. So that is now part of, part of the cut list. So really easy to get non-structural members, these plate type geometries in there. I'll also do the same here. Right click on the tabletop portion, create a bounding box. Again, just really quick, right click and jump in there. And there's my, my quarter inch plate, 24 by 48, and then all of that information there. You can reorder the bounding, or excuse me, you can reorder the cut list if you need to. If you don't like how SOLIDWORKS is, is itemizing this, you know, I could take any of these, just left click, drag them up, very similar to how, how an assembly tree or how the feature manager tree is, is reordered. You can go ahead and just easily make that look and feel exactly the way that you need to. The property summary shows you what um, has that information or which cut list item has the properties. So for example, I added in a brand new property of the weight. Notice the only uh, item that has the weight is the table top. So to make my table more complete, I would need to just update this particular column. Now it's not too bad. Just kind of come up through here and add that mass property there. And I'll leave a few of these out. Cut list item one and two, I, I won't itemize their weight so you can see the difference there. And then finally, the cut list table tab just gives you a preview of what this table is going to look like when I place it into a drawing. Now everything is, of course, customizable. That description property, you can change anything and everything. Um, but to begin with, you know, highly, highly automated, but you do have a nice level of flexibility. So what about those structural members? I'll say the bounding box command to the rescue. Some really nice functionality to where SOLIDWORKS will, will itemize all that information for you. So you've got this great model done. Put it into a drawing. For the most part, detailing your weldments is nearly identical to detailing a regular SOLIDWORKS part. The difference really comes down to how do you want to to create views of the individual bodies. And that's one of the most common questions we see. We all know how to drop in the overall view. We all know how to put in a cut list. Those are just buttons to click. But how do I create just a detailed view of, for example, one of the mitered members or a view of, of one of the angled tubes? And that's really what I want to focus on here. And that comes to leveraging the command either relative view or utilizing select bodies. You may be familiar with those. If not, we'll brush up here. And it's also one of those things where we tend to learn or re-familiarize ourselves with view alignment and view rotation, so everything is nice and square and located exactly where we need it to be located. So again, we'll jump into SOLIDWORKS. We'll just quickly make a drawing of this part. 
I'll make a C size ANSI inch so it's nice and big. And as you may expect, we can just start dragging and dropping from the view palette in there. They really do work the exact same way. If I want to go to the view layout tab and grab a, re grab a regular model view, we can go ahead and place them in there. You know, projected views, again, it's a familiar environment. This is the stuff that I would hope we all are very, very comfortable with. Um, but what I really need is I really need to detail one of these angle members right there. Maybe I need to call out all the dimensions from one of my gussets so we can actually get one of those, you know, cut on the laser jet or the water jet or the laser cutter or whatever it is. So this is where some of the other commands come into play. There's really two ways that we could do this. We can use a standard model view. We can select the same weldment table, but now we want to utilize this button right here called Select Bodies. So that'll jump us into the part window, and we can grab that body right there, green checkbox OK, and now we'll have just a view of only that particular body. And we have the same flexibility of changing the view scale, creating projection views. We could section it, things of that nature. But I would like to rotate it. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. I'm going to change the uh, scale from 1 to 8, maybe up to 1 to 4 to make it a little bit easier to see. And uh, now let's rotate that around. If we know the angle to rotate, which sometimes we do, we can leverage just regular view rotate right here on the pop-up uh, kind of 3D toolbar there. We can click and drag and it'll snap, you know, 45 degrees, whatever it is that we need. Or you could key in the exact value you need. So there we can see the rotate drawing view. Maybe that works, um, but not every single angle is, is known. So there's a couple of other ways that you can get uh, that view aligned correctly. So I'm going to undo Control-Z to bring it back to where it's all rotated here. And I'm going to pre-select the model edge right there. And with that edge pre-selected, I'm going to go to Tools, Align Drawing View, and I'm going to say make that a horizontal edge. Now by doing that, you can see it rotated it around. Don't always get to pick the exact rotation you want, though, so do be aware of that. But now I do have a nice... Uh, horizontal edge. I could, you know, flip that 180 degrees if I really wanted to. But again, that tools align drawing view, you need to pre-select that edge. That can help um, get these views aligned exactly the way that you need them to be aligned. And I've got a little bit too many drawing views. I don't think I need that particular view. Um, I'll leave that one in there because it looks pretty decent. But let's go ahead and we'll go to the annotation tab and we'll just put in our weldment cut list. So this will be exactly what we saw for the most part earlier. We can see the item numbers, the quantities, that description. There's the plates for, for the various pieces of geometry there. Um, depending on your unit system, it's going to control how this is all going to be displayed, you know, whether or not it's, it's feet and inches and things of that nature. So I'm just going to set everything to IPS. I have my custom unit set to uh, to feet and inches in this particular template. I do need some additional information, so I'm going to right click, just like any table, insert a column either to the right or to the left, however it is that we want to set it up. And in column E, we'll come over here to the left and we'll switch it over to a cut list property. And we can see, I can bring in the, the cut angles for any miters. I'm going to bring in that weight property, so there we can see the weight of everything. I'll add in one more just to show that we can, another column to the right, and in column F, I will bring over that particular angle. Now, not super helpful since I really only have one structural member that is in fact mitered, but you could have that full list of all the angular cuts you need for all the structural members in your, uh, in your, your weldment drawing. Balloons will work the same way. Things will get itemized, and uh, yeah, I like to use manual balloon sometimes instead of the auto balloon, but I could go ahead and call, call all of those components, or excuse me, those bodies out however it is that I need to. And as I'm sure we are all familiar with, we can use just our regular smart dimension command and uh, have some uh, less than preferred drafting practices <laughs> where I've got my balloons crossing over my... Uh, my dimensions there, so I should probably clean that up. 
but you can see the the real trick to any of this in in uh, you know coming from the support side is how do we create views of only the individual bodies and that really works for any multi-bodied part that is not unique to weldments now another way to create bodies of just or excuse me views of just bodies is to use the relative view command now it is not on the toolbar by default but you can get to it from the insert pull down menu we'll go to drawing views and we'll say relative to model so we'll select the planar face of a model in another graphics window or you know insert from file now I already have a model open in another window so I'm just going to switch windows real quick and I'm going to select my gusset so that is going to be the front and the nice thing about a relative view is we have full control over the orientation so this way we get the right view or excuse me the correct view the first time and I want this surface to be the second or the right hand orientation and we'll switch it over to the selected bodies and we'll choose that gusset right there now I do have to be careful I accidentally let me just make sure that I didn't select an incorrect face I think I'm good we'll say okay and then there's my little teeny tiny gusset so the relative view may be a bit easier to use than the select bodies option again that is insert drawing view and relative to model kind of an old one um, but still a very very useful function tends to get a little bit forgotten anymore so we'll save the drawing up on on the desktop as well so that's kind of a long-winded example of the dare I say basics of weldments of creating that little frame what about customizing them obviously the you know 15 different structural profiles that come with SolidWorks aren't going to be sufficient so one option is to download them from SolidWorks in the design library we've got SolidWorks content and weldments control click any of those folders and it'll download a zip file the other option is to create your own honestly if you can sketch which I know you all can and I know you're all very proficient at it that's really the only tool set you need sketch in whatever profile you need and put all the information on it for example here a very simple cross-section for a 2 by 4 now I am leaving just sharp corners but if I wanted to have nice rounded corners in there like plain lumber you know <laughs> comes to you from the lumber yard put in sketch fillets for example so let's take a look really quick at how to customize them but before we do that we do need to understand the importance of file locations so the weldment location by default is buried deep inside your SOLIDWORKS installation folder. The subfolder language, English, weldment profiles. Of course, you can change it in the file locations to anywhere you want, but that's where it is by default. Also notice inside there, there are some subfolders of ANSI inch, subfolder square tube, and these correspond to the standard, the type, and the size that we have with Weldment. So it's important that in the top-level Weldment Profiles folder, you have a subfolder to categorize everything, and then one other subfolder that actually contains the members that or the structural profiles you want to use. So very quickly, let's take a look at creating a custom profile. Again, you can download them from SolidWorks in the Design Library. The SOLIDWORKS content, weldments, and just control click one of these and that'll download it to wherever you want it to be downloaded on your computer. For the sake of time, I've already downloaded it, so let's just take a look at what those look like. So initially, it's going to be a zip file, and that zip file is going to contain, I've downloaded the ANSI inch for an example whole bunch of folders and inside these library feature parts files so if you want to use the one that SOLIDWORKS provides you they're very very easy to use just simply extract them and I'll just right click extract here I like to use 7-zip it's a free utility it makes this easy and then copy and paste these to the appropriate location so we'll just right click copy I do have my weldment profiles folder mapped because it can be a little bit difficult to get to and then right click in here and paste now I don't want to overwrite anything um, but if I did you know I went ahead and pasted it there we can see there's my ANSI inch and I now have all these extra options to use so it's as easy as that to 
utilize what SOLIDWORKS has. The important thing is, where do you locate them? So depending on how your system is set up, we can always double check by the system options, file locations, the drop-down list here at the very bottom to weldment profiles, and there you can see your weldment path. You can put it wherever you want. Just remember that top-level weldment folder needs to have one subfolder of the category, another subfolder to further refine, and then all the individual sizes fit in there. So as I mentioned at the very beginning, I actually don't know how to weld, so having a steel table in SOLIDWORKS does me no good. So let me create a very quick uh, lumber profile, because that would make the mo more sense for me building something like this at home. So we'll just put a real quick sketch on the front plane and leverage some symmetry. Helps if we actually use a center rectangle here. And very quickly, we'll just put in the dimensions of a 2 by 4. Now, if I want the automatic descriptive properties to pop up, which I do, I do need to add that information to my kind of seed profile sketch. So I'll go to my file properties. I'll specify a new property of description. And, you know, we'll just say lumber 2 by 4. Now, the ones by default in SOLIDWORKS are all linked to the dimensions. But again, dimensional lumber isn't uh, what it actually says. So we need to just manually key that in. Now, the important part is saving this in my weldment folder location. So we'll exit out of that sketch. I'm going to pre-select the sketch. This is going to get saved into the library. One of those steps that's easy to forget. So pre-select the sketch, file save as. And I'm, I am going to use my shortcut, uh, my pinned quick access here. So I have a folder for custom, one subfolder of lumber, and I'll change it over to a library feature part. I always forget I do this 100% of the time. Change it to the library feature part first because it will always default to your design library. So bear with. I'll go back through there, and we'll just call this a 2 by 4. As easy as that. Once you get your first created, it's then super easy to start building up a family of them. So if I wanted to make a, a 2 by 6, for example, We'll just change that one dimension, rebuild, do a real quick file save as, and we'll change it from 2 by 4 to a 2 by 6, and the cycle continues. So it's really that first step of building a custom profile that might take a little bit of time where you can really speed it up after the fact. But I think we'll all agree, not too difficult in this example, just to create a simple sketch rectangle, appropriate dimensions, and save it into the library. Now, if I want to, I could break everything and change any number of my structural members with a right click, edit the feature. We could go to my custom size. Actually, if we go to ANSI inch, you'll see all those new sizes that have been automatically mapped in here. I didn't even have to shut SOLIDWORKS down. Uh, but if I want to you know, turn this into a lumber uh, example, just simply change it. And now all of those are going to change to lumber. Yeah, my trims don't quite match up, and, and everything isn't going to work exactly perfectly, and I lost a couple of, of miters there. But you can see that, yeah, even in a haphazard example like this, you can really swap those in and out. So good question I saw pop up there. Create a profile with the snap points. That is created for you if I get back in here real quick. The software automatically interprets any sketch point. So let me jump back in here. Let me open up one of these. So in this sketch, any sketch point is another uh, snap point, I guess I'll call it that, that you could reposition this profile. It always begins at the origin initially. Um, so think about that when you sketch these to make sure that everything's symmetric. But I have the options to reposition this profile in any one of these sketch points. And if you need more sketch points, you could create, you know, construction lines. You know, maybe if I want extra points there, for example, or extra points there, for example. Those are just new options that you'll have. You could also simply use a sketch point, um, you know, and just I'll randomly place some points there. Anywhere there's a, a vertex or a sketch point, that's 
where you can that's where the software is extracting those those profiles so I I missed that so thank you very much for for asking that question and just a real quick resave and that'll update all that information again in my in my Weldment library so anywhere there's a sketch point that's what's key on all of those positions right there so in the last couple minutes I want to wrap up uh, by talking a little bit about SolidWorks 2019, uh, specifically this new feature that they called the structure system. And if you've come to any of our rollouts, you saw us kind of go over a really quick video of how this works. And it's a super automated, kind of dedicated live editing environment. I know that's a mouthful um, to create really complex weldments. It does leverage all of your existing structural members. But when I saw this, I wanted to think about, is this better than quote unquote traditional weldments? So could I build this part that you see on the screen faster in 19 using the structure system or faster in 18 using traditional weldment methods? So before we look into that, I'm just going to show you a screenshot of the two parts that I created in the feature manager trees of each of them. So in 2019 on the left, very, very compact tree. The way that the structure system works, the types of geometry it can leverage makes it very, very fast, um, very, very compact tree. To recreate this model in 18, and I'll admit I may not have taken the best approach ever, I actually had to cut the tree down a little bit so we only see the origin, all my reference planes to create all my various 3D sketches, all my structural members, and all of the trims. So it can be done, but again, is it faster? So I'm going to fire up 2019 here real quick. And as we all know, it's always a good practice to run multiple major releases of SolidWorks simultaneously on your computer. Don't do that. <laughs> um, and just show you kind of how this works. So the first thing that I want to point out with the structure system is it can utilize very, very simple geometries. So here we have one shared sketch, two extruded surfaces, and a sketch to represent the web and a plane. So you do not have to create a ton of 3D sketches. A little bit different way of thinking about it. So we turn on the structure system, and that doesn't mean you cannot use traditional weldments. They exist in 2019 the way that they have existed since 2004. This is just different. So we'll say structure system and start off by adding primary members. And all I really need to do is just window select. And every vertex, every edge, SolidWorks will, will use to create a structural member. And we can leverage different profiles. So we'll go ahead and we'll just make these square tubes. And in just a couple of clicks of the mouse, I've got the bulk of this frame done. And then we'll say OK. If I need to change, again, this is kind of a live editing environment, we can just, again, do more selections. And I'm going to grab all the vertical tubes, in this case, 12 of them, and change them from square tubes to round tubes. So these will just be 10-inch diameter round pipes. And we'll say OK. So the building of structural members is lightning fast. Basically, as fast as you can drag the mouse, you're creating the geometry. The next few members we need to create work with these webs. So I'll go ahead and I'll turn on those sketch. We'll create more primary members. And you know, if you don't want to use window selection, of course, you can just individually select the tubes, switch over to the profile tab, and change those to 7-inch tubes. So very, very quick. And then finally, there's some other members that I need that kind of join, a little bit hard to see, but join these interior vertical members there. So what we'll do is create what we call secondary members. And these are always um, in between primary members. And the thing that's really neat about these is they're built off of planes. You don't even need a sketch. So I have two different planes of two different elevations. We'll turn on the chain option, and now I simply click on member pairs. So as fast as you can click the mouse again, we can see these connected members start to get created in there. So very, very quick way to add these weldments in there. And honestly, this part is done. When we exit the structure system, we are taking in or taken into the corner management tool. 
And this is the part of the process where I know that creating the structures are fast, but I figured or I assumed that cleaning up the corners would be slower than traditional weldments. Um, but as we'll see here, I, I wasn't always correct. So we're going to set up a couple of simple corners right there. You can see there's an obvious gap. We'll just change it from a simple planer trim to a body trim to cope them. I've got one on the bottom as well that we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll body trim that. So very similar to how standard weldments are. And now we can clean up the, the complex corners. So we'll click on the complex tab. And there's a lot of them to clean up. And I'm not going to, to spend the rest of the time cleaning up the corners, but it really didn't take me as long as I thought. So we've got three mitered corners right there, which isn't what we want. I want these two horizontal tubes mitered, so this tube and this tube mitered. This tube I want a planer cut, so thankfully there's a window for that. I just drop that down, and that's all there is to it. So it is actually a lot faster than I initially anticipated to take that central member, that vertical tube, and just drop it down to a planer cut. Again, I'm not going to spend time going through and cleaning up every single one of those. And this does need a little bit more work to finish it out. But it is a very, very fast way to build weldments. Now, let's take a look at the same model that I created inside of SolidWorks 2018. So I've got one that's finished. And we'll go ahead and we'll open it up. And we can see all the individual sketches so I had to create several, several 2D sketches to help me kind of lay everything out, lots of planes, to generate the 3D sketch. And this is what the structure system automatically extracts from the surface body. And then I kind of did the same thing here, another 3D sketch to capture everything there. So utilizing some convert entities and things like that. And then a bunch of structural members, there's the horizontal tubes. There's the vertical tubes. There's another set of vertical tubes. More tubes. And then finally, more tubes right there to create those, those corner members. And then a whole bunch of trims to clean everything up. Now, the part can be made completely identical as it is inside of 2019. Now, my results, and I will admit this is not scientific at all, I just kind of timed myself to model this at a leisurely pace. I didn't practice. I wasn't um, memorizing steps or anything like that. But to create all the uh, sketches inside of 2018, the first time it took me over 10 minutes when I was just trying to figure it out. When I kind of had a plan in my head, it took me under five minutes to build it. The creation of all those structural members took me about two minutes. The corner trims, just a shade under three minutes. I rounded everything to the nearest quarter minute. Um, the pattern of those, those web members, I didn't really include those in my overall time. Um, but, you know, it's the same in each version of software for a grand total of about nine and a half to ten minutes to build that part, you know, at a normal, I'm not racing the clock type pace. The structure system, uh, the, that method in 2019, quite a bit faster. Uh, I was really surprised. I figured that... I knew the initial creation was going to be faster by utilizing those simple extruded surfaces, just a couple minutes to build that. The, the structural members, not as fast as I thought it was going to be in 19. And the corner trims, where I thought would take much, much longer than traditional trimming methods in 18, were actually a little bit faster. So you can see, again, my very unscientific comparison of the structural system capabilities in 19 compared to traditional weldment modeling in 18 about nine and a half, ten minutes to just a shade, uh, shade under six minutes. It's a different way of thinking, but it really does speed up that initial weldment sketch creation. You don't need to do that anymore. And of course, uh, it, it is highly automated. So, you know, if you do a lot of really big weldments, that is something to look forward to when you, uh, you know, when you decide to make the move into SolidWorks 2019. So with that, I know I went really long. I really appreciate everyone sticking to, uh, sticking with me. Uh, there are some, several upcoming web events. They are all after the Thanksgiving week holiday. 
So November 22nd, we have our 3D printing, talking about some tools for metal manufacturing. And then in December, we've got a lot of PDM, PLM, and, and DriveWorks type webcasts. So in the last few minutes we have together, please feel free to ask any questions over the chat. I will do my best to answer them. And if you don't want to send them in on the chat, I totally understand. Shoot me an email. You know, feel free to ask me any question about this or anything else. There you can see my email address. Uh, any comments, any questions about anything again or ideas. You know, we've got a very diverse user community. If you guys have ideas for future webcasts, something you'd like to see, you know, send them in. Uh, we definitely want to uh, cover as many bases as, as we can. So with that, again, I say thank you to everyone for joining me today. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Have a great Thanksgiving, and we'll see you soon.